Hey viewers, uh, Jason Journal of Electrical Services. I'm on my way to my second job for the day and this one is one of my older installs. I think I would have done this probably about seven years ago. And this one has been a bit of a thorn in my side over the years. Uh, we've had uh, multiple water leaks and now I've got a solar panel which is burnt out because it's installed in a partially shaded situation. So this job goes back to when I was subcontracting uh, with, and I had staff, and it was one of those jobs where we got to site and you stand there and scratch your head and think this place should not be getting solar, um, the panels aren't gonna fit, the roof's not suitable, there's whole heap of reasons why solar wasn't really going to work but you just have to make it work because the system's been sold the client's expecting it to get installed so you make choices regarding the nature of the installation which aren't necessarily ideal but you're choosing the best choice out of a series of bad choices so that's what we did I've seen some photos of what the issue is and um, yeah it's the uh, REC panel which has been installed in a partially shaded situation and it has burnt out the uh, couple of the cells on the solar panel now this is a Twin peak split cell uh, solar panel which many people will argue that you can install in a shaded situation, but I think if you're going to do that, and this is proof of it, really you need to install something like a Tiger Optimizer, where the bypassing of that power through that shaded panel will be managed by an external product and not by the internal bypass diode on the solar panel, because eventually it's gonna fail. Um, as is the case with this one because that energy has been going through that solar cell that's shaded the power from the rest of the string is trying to push through it but that solar panel is shaded so it now becomes a resistance while the power is trying to push through it this one's trying to hold it back because there's no there's no sun on that cell um, so it becomes a resistive uh, cell and it gets really really hot and eventually burns out so just on my way there now I think this is my third callback over the years the other two have been for water leaks um, we'll have a look at what's going on uh, as to uh, what I can do I've got a replacement solar panel in the back of the van it's not an REC it's a SunTech solar panel now if you're replacing solar panels in the same string that's fine uh, but you'd have to make sure that the um, electrical characteristics of the solar panel are within about 5% of the one that you're replacing. replacing. Um, and the reason being is that if it's too low, again, it's gonna become a restriction on the string. And if it's too high, it's gonna push extra power through the other panels. Um, so you can, I'm installing an optimizer and the purpose of the optimizer is uh, purely to allow that power to bypass the panel when it is actually shaded. So um, I'm just trying to find the house now. Once I'm up on the roof, uh, I'll take another video of what's actually going on and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so this is what we got. And like I said, I remember this was the best choice out of a lot of bad options and this is the shaded area there you can see the solar cell that's burnt out and that's purely from that shading from this corner um, so all the rest of the panels in this string would be trying to push power through that one and um, that's what's going on there I've got a feeling that I had to install a minimum of five panels on this side um, to get the MPPT to fire up. So the older inverters, I think they had a, uh, a, a lower sort of MPPT range of around the 200 volt mark, where that was the minimum you needed to get them started up. It varies on different inverters. So I had to get five on 
the northern facing roof. And this roof absolutely fucking sucks. It's so steep, I forgot about that. Um, so some of the other panels are actually facing south. And again, on a steep roof, not exactly ideal, but hey, any solar is better than no solar. And if we have a look over here, there's just no other roof space facing north where I could have got the minimum required five solar panels um, facing north. So it's shaded over there. There's no room there, that's shaded as well. You've got the big fuck off hot water system there. Oh, maybe I could have fit one on there, but that would have ruined all the ridge capping because it would have got way too close. So that would have been a no there because uh, in order to get the tile interface on, I would have had to push that tile up there, which is going to damage the ridge capping and then it's all going to fall apart and break. So I obviously made the decision at the time to squeeze all five panels, which was the minimum I needed to fire that inverter up on that roof space there. And um, clearly it's to the detriment of the solar panel. And like I said, that is a split, what they call an REC Twin Peak, which at the time, perhaps I had that in my head that it would be okay, because you can see it's right on the line there of the other um, half of the solar panel. So at the time that was probably marketed as a, a U-Butte panel that you can do this sort of thing to, I can't quite remember. And I probably thought it would be okay. And you can see I've pushed it as far as I possibly could to the front of the house there without it damaging the ridge capping um, or hanging over the uh, front of the roof. There is some damage there, but that's not from me. That's just time. It's, the ridge capping's got damage all over the place. So that's it. And seven years later, it's come back to bite me in the ass. And uh, I guess this is why I know what I know about solar and all the things I do. So we'll pull this bad boy off, swap it out. I'm gonna put a Tygo optimizer on the placement panel which is a SunTech, which is the same electrical specs as this one, and um, should be all good to chug along for another 10, 15 years, hopefully. Righto, cheers guys. Righto, that's all done, and that was a lovely reminder why I don't do much rooftop solar these days, because it sucks. It's hard work, it was a really steep roof, I had to put the bloody harness on, Harness hasn't been used for years. Look at, that. Look at that. That's rust. That's from uh, me sweating. All the salt and the sweat. <laughs> Not really. It's from apprentices sweating and uh, being up on the roof sweating their asses off. I would never do that. <sighs> Not really. It was in my trailer. My trailer leaked. But uh, it sucked. Steep roof. The tiles keep slipping from their footings. Uh, I, yes, I put the harness on because I was worried about slipping off the ladder. It's quite a high roof, even though it's single storey. I lost my 6mm impact driver under the tiles. Snapped off a panel clamp. <sighs> Foot got stuck under the panel. Just, yeah, not much fun. Not much fun. It's not even hot today. I was sweating my ass off. Stomach hurts because I was bending in ways I shouldn't bloody bend anymore at 53. Anyway, so this is the panel. Now these Twin Peak panels were kind of marketed to be resilient to exactly what's just happened here. There's the cell, burnt out. Now the reason it's shattered, is that, as I've mentioned in many other videos, is those areas get that hot that what happens is the glass shatters. You can see Look at that little bit of the buzz bar there. It's melted onto the junk under the junction box. Another one there. So back, these back sheets were actually flammable, which was disastrous because if this happened, um, the solar panel would obviously catch fire. But these these ones, um, they they don't burn. They're not flammable. 
interesting though. And then yeah, they just get that hot that it shatters the glass. So a lot of people think it's from impact, it's not. It's from the failed cell getting that hot that it shatters the panel. Shatters the glass. So I'll take that off to recycling. Um, definitely been a bit of a thorn in my side, this one. And um, hopefully I don't have to come back for a while. But uh, incidentally, the retailer is paying me to do this job. A lot of retailers would just ignore the calls, don't answer, don't help. But um, these guys are good. They're good guys. That's why I used to work for them. Um, I don't anymore, don't do any subcontract work, haven't for a long time, but these were good guys and they're doing the right thing by the client and myself. So good result at the end of the day and uh, hopefully no more issues for another 10, 15 years on this one. Righto, later.